never be my love that I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. Does it take a trophy to make you cry? I'll never be more love than I am right
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Situated here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. It's nine thirty this morning, nine thirty AM. Good morning, good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. Come on in. Come right on in. About to get started here in just a second here. We're about to get started in just a second. Come right on in. It's 9.31. 931. Good morning, uh, everyone. I see I got my caption up there. Let me see if I can get rid of that. It's typing everything I say. <laughs> Good morning. Come on in. I'm right on in. All right, they say I need to turn my volume up, so I'm going to turn my... I did have it down pretty low. There we go. It was down low. I've got it turned up now, so I hope this is good and loud enough uh, so everyone can hear. Yeah, I had my volume. It was turned down a little bit low there, so I hope you can hear me really well. I've got the caption up. Uh, I'm going to try that just a little bit for uh, those who don't get a chance to hear what I say. I've got the caption up, so it's going to type everything that I say so that you can also hear what I say and see what I say. <laughs> all right. All right. Good morning. Good morning to all. All right. I hope that's coming up pretty good uh, and loud and clear for everyone. Uh, it's good to have you here this morning. Uh, I hope the volume is up loud enough for you. Can you hear? Can, is the volume good? Good morning. Good morning. I uh, see we got Sister Barbara Pearson in this morning. Sister uh, Laverne, Sister Nadine's in this morning. Uh, uh, Sister Ingram is in with me this morning. Uh, let's see, it says Jada's, uh, Ing, Jada's watching this morning, and Mama Lewis is watching this morning. So good morning, good morning, everyone. Sister Marshall's coming in this morning. I see you. Good morning, everybody. All righty, good morning. Come on down. As I mentioned earlier, you'll see the caption going on at the bottom down there, uh, which allow you to. Not only hear what I say, but see what I say as well. Uh, we're going to try that out this morning and see how that works. If it doesn't um, work out good, we won't use it again. But we'll, <laughs> we'll try to see uh, how we're going to work out. All right, let's get started this morning. Uh, we, we're going to cover Psalms 107 this morning. It's a scripture you hear often in the pool pit. It's a scripture you hear people quote a lot. And this morning, uh, we're going to take a look at that, that text in Psalms 107. 
and uh, uh, let the let the redeemed say so. And you know, like I mentioned earlier, we mentioned that scripture quite often. And here David mentions it in the text in, in Psalms 107. And so we're going to uh, we uh, invite everyone to come in this morning. Please come in and, and listen as we take in, the, in into this lesson. I, I, I think the lesson is a very interesting, very great lesson this morning because in this lesson, I learned quite a bit and it was able to, I was able to uh, look at how uh, this applies in my life. So as I'll be talking to, to you today, I'll be talking to me as well. So I've, I've got the mirror on today. I'm looking at that man in the mirror in this lesson this morning. So uh, I see we have uh, Minister Lizzie Stitz in with us this morning. That's awesome. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to have you here this morning. So before we begin, though, I'd like to approach our Heavenly Father in prayer and uh, ask for his guidance in this lesson this morning. So as we, before we begin, uh, let's, let's bow down and approach him. Our Heavenly Father, oh great you are, how powerful you are, Father. Thank you for allowing us to come in this morning to uh, once again look into your word, Father, uh, to, to divide your word correctly, Father, uh, and to use and apply this in our everyday life. Uh, Father, as your people, Father, we want to do things that's pleasing in your eyes, Father. So, Father, guide us, direct us, coach us, Father, in, in your way so that as we take in this knowledge, Father, we can use this knowledge in, in each and every part of our life, Father. Father, as we begin to study and, and as I begin to uh, teach your word, Father, uh, please, Father, let them see you, Father, that these are your words, Father, your words to guide us each and every day in our daily walk, Father. So, Father, we as we go forth in this word, Father, uh, continue, Father, uh, to guide us or continue, Father, to pour your Holy Spirit upon us. Please, Father, watch over the homes of, of different individuals who are going through different trials, different tribulations, Father, uh, that you can, that they can continue to seek you, Father, and continue to apply uh, what they have learned. And, Father, that our words can be an encouragement to them in their daily walk. So we ask for your direction, Father. We ask for your Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I see another individual that has joined in. Uh, uh, Miss Pearl J. Woolfolk. Good morning. Good morning. Come right on in, everyone. Come right on in. So I won't delay. As I mentioned earlier, we're, we're going to be covering Psalms 107 this morning. And a powerful lesson, a, a, a lesson that uh, speaks volume in our lives, uh, a scripture that we use constantly and about uh, the redemption. And so once we take a look at this text, uh, please follow along with me in your Bible, uh, because I like to uh, also share this in, on, our, on the screen so that you can see what we're speaking of as we, as we take a look at this word. So please open your Bibles with me as we peer into God's word in Psalms 107. That's the 107 Psalms. And it begins in the very first part of it. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Can I stop just right there? Because see, last week when we studied in the book of Psalms, once again, David is directing us to give thanks to God. You remember last week, it says that we were to speak upon his marvelous works. Let individuals know about who God is. Now, as you read the book of Psalms, you will constantly find uh, the direction for us to give thanks to God, give praise to God, and let others know how good God is. That is something that's always, that you'll find in the book of Psalms, that will always direct our attention to give praise and thanks to God. Now, 
as we open up at this book, uh, as we read in Psalms 107, what we want to understand is here God's people uh, are giving thanks uh, of, to God and his mercy. They are people who uh, find themselves in a predicament uh, of, of being in bondage. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is how God has delivered us, how we as God's people should find ourselves giving thanks. You know, it's, it's something that we should do daily in being grateful for what God has delivered us from. That, that is something that we all can express and be thankful for, for what God has brought us out of. Now, as we peer into this word, what we're going to take a close look at is how God has delivered us. As I mentioned earlier, in this book of Psalms, it, if you notice at the very first part of it, it says, oh, see, oh focuses the, the, uh, the, our attention and, our, and, and it brings excitement to us about what's to come. Look at the text. It says, oh, so now I've got your attention. David wants you, he wants you to listen to what he's about to say. He said, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. So he's aroused our attention, and he's saying that we should give thanksgiving and express it equally with our lips of praise, with intensity to God. He says that our gratefulness should exude, it should come forth to upon us. We shouldn't be forced to have to do that because his mercy endures it forever. See, after the 70 years of uh, their captivity and bondage in Babylon, uh, we're going to visit this in our lesson. He is telling them that they need to give praise to God because God has pulled them out of bondage. Let's continue into verse 2. Now, this is a text that, we, like I mentioned earlier, that is often read. It's, oh, we often uh, mention this quite often. Uh, uh, we hear from the pulpit. We hear from uh, uh, in, in our lessons, in our studies. Follow along with me. Verse 2, it says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now, when we look at that text, uh, I love how uh, that text is explained in the New Living Translation. In, in the New Living Translation, it says, has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Once again, we find ourselves expressing how God has delivered us. Now, as we find in this text here, they had a reason uh, to express their thanks to God because of their being redeemed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the psalmist is trying to get us to see that God is a redeemer. Now, to, let's look at that word first. Can we, can, we, can we break that word down? The word redeem is to buy back property that was sold or a person who was enslaved. So, so in reference to the scripture, the redeemed are those whom God has brought back and from bondage or from slavery, as he did with the people of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt. You see, see, when he delivered them from captivity and also when he delivered them from captivity in Babylon, because of what God had did for Israel, it was mandatory that the redeemed would sing praises and thanksgivings unto the Lord. That also that we should declare openly to all the nations 
then that, that to let them know that God has redeeming power. See, we're going to continue to fall back into this same thing that David constantly reminds us, is that God is a redeemer. And if God has redeemed us, then it behooves each one of us to express this and let everyone know that God has delivered us. And that is exactly what Job did. You remember when he was going through his trial, he declared in Job 19.25, I know that my redeemeth liveth. You see, we have an obligation. Mm. God has brought us out a lot of things. God has, in, in this instance, we're speaking of the Babylon when they was in captivity in Babylon. We, in this instance, we also could have mentioned uh, the captivity that they was under in Egypt. But God has also redeemed us as God's people. And as God's people, we are obligated to let others know how God has redeemed us. We should, as Pastor mentioned, we got to let everyone know our testimony. Now, how can we sit on something that God has blessed us with? And that is that mouth, that gospel, the spread. Once again, we find ourselves back into the same thing that David mentioned last week. And as you read in the book of Psalms, you're going to find that quite often, if God has blessed us, we got to tell somebody about it. See, we all been redeemed. See, we all should be, be grateful that God redeemed each one of us. He's brought us back out of slavery. Now, Brother Terry, what you mean? That we should be happy about it. Because if it wasn't for the redemption of Jesus Christ and buying us back, we would be individuals or humans who would go to sleep, wake up, go to our jobs, go to our daily activities, and then when we die, that'll be all to it. But by means of this redemption that he brought us back from, from, uh, from slavery or brought us back uh, from sin, we now can go to sleep, wake up by his power, move on his glory, die and be raised up. <laughs> the redemption power is real. So as we look at this and we realize that we are a redeemed people, that God's power has put us in a position that we can live again. How are we living our lives? As we turn into a new year and we focus upon what God has done for us already and, and, and we analyze uh, what we have put our attention on, or what our major focuses are on, it should have been on spreading the gospel. See, within that gospel, we're talking about what God has done for us. See, our redemption is something, as I mentioned earlier, is not something we sit on. It's something we move on. <laughs> See, you can't sit on what God has done for you. Keep it quiet to yourself. Because the Bible constantly speaks about as what, what God has done for us, how he has blessed us. You know, somebody else is going through that same situation. Somebody else is still going through that same trial. That's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How can you say so if you keep your mouth shut? Hmm, you got to speak it. You got to tell somebody. That's why the gospel is important. That's why every individual has a responsibility to preach the gospel. So as you analyze, and we look at 2022 approaching upon us, you, we, we have to revisit what we did in 2021, what we did in 2019, what we did in 2018. Was the gospel the focus of our life? Now, we all have busy lives. 
We all have things that uh, we go through. We all have things that, you know, we have a daily life. We have a daily cycle. And we and we busy people. You know, we always got things on our schedule. We're busy people. But this is, if you look at verse 2, that wasn't a suggestion. <laughs> the Bible says, if, if you redeem, you need to open up your mouth. In other words, this is not a suggestion. You need to, this is a command to God's people that we need to go forth and let somebody know about it. I, I, I want to take a look at something here. I think Mother Lewis says, she says, thinking and thankful go together with the lesson. Because if we think about what God has done, we can't help but thank him, just like the scripture says, forgetting that all his benefits. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, man, there's nothing more um, disrespectful is for somebody who has done so much for you and you keep your mouth shut. You have to let somebody know. I mean, see, in, in this instance, you know, what he said, uh, as he mentioned in, in last week's lesson, we got to open up our mouths. We got to tell somebody. And there's plenty of people out there who need to hear about Jesus Christ. Sister Vandra Johnson said, I can, she said she can't keep her mouth quiet. She said she got to talk about Jesus. <laughs> she said he is a deliverer. <laughs> See, Sister Nadine said, we got to tell the story. God has done for most of us. All right, all right, all right. Now, now, now I'm glad y'all said that. Now, you remember now, remember what you said. We got to talk about God. We got to open up our mouths and let him listen. And we got, I mean, and, and let individuals hear what Jesus has done for us. Now, can you can can I can I tell you my story? I'm gonna tell you my story. On uh, when I analyze this lesson, I want to know, Tim, what have you put your focus on? What have you put your attention on in the last several years? Now, our command in Matthew 28, 19, and 20 is go therefore and what? Make disciples. Talk about Jesus Christ. The Bible says, let the Redeemer say so. So what we have to do is we have to be individuals who speak about Jesus Christ. We got to talk about it. We, and, but when we look at our calendar, when we focus upon what we have done thus far, what does it look like? Can I show you my calendar? Can I show you what I look like? Because see, when I was doing this lesson, I was it, it, it beat me up. It, it, I mean, it put a whooping on me because I had to look at and and, and it, it showed me something that I was not doing. It wasn't anything that was wrong, but I got to focus my attention on something that God has commanded me. Follow along with me. Can, can you follow along with me just a second here? I want to, I, I got to share this information with you. And, 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 and this is something that uh, that really came, it spoke to, to me who I am in, in my ministry. Because, you know, we all have a ministry that we have to, we have to do, and that is preaching the gospel. Follow along with me. Watch this. Take a look at this right here. Oh, and now this is this is my calendar, and I want you to notice something about my calendar. My calendar, I was busy. On the first of the year, I went to wash night. Then I attended d d during that time period, family and friends day. I attended the program called Easter Sunday. I attended the in annual church anniversary. I attended the annual youth Sunday. I attended the men's and women's day. I attended the annual pastor anniversary. I attended the choir appreciation day. I was also visible at the Thanksgiving service. And I also attended the Christmas service. All of this, there's nothing wrong with none of, any of this. And all of this I attended. But you know what's missing in there? Where is the gospel ministry at? Where is my gospel ministry at that God commanded me to do? Now, listen to me real good. 
There's nothing in the Bible that says there's anything wrong with tending any of these services. But you, I want you to notice something about each one of these services. Each one of these services has to do with something going on inside the church. But the gospel is something that we're supposed to do outside the church. <laughs> See, if you look at these services, there's, there's nothing wrong with attending these services. But we got to include something that's very important that's missing out of this service. And that's what whooped me so good. I put a lot of energy in these right here, but where is my gospel at? Where is my gospel service at? Who did I speak to? Who did I take the time to go out to let somebody know about Jesus? Where are the ones that I went out and, and, and the oppressed, the poor, to speak about Jesus Christ? Oh my my my! And this is this is a for this is for Terry. This is Terry's schedule right here. So this this I'm whooping up on me because I got to take a look at what's important. There's nothing wrong with attending these, but where is my ministry at? Where is my gospel ministry at? Oh my my! Help me, somebody! Help me! Now, as I took a look at this right here, I. I I, I, I have to give a what you want. I, I have to talk and give a shout out to my sister, Sister Evangelist Johnson. Sister Evangelist Johnson did something that I that I th as I think about it more and more, I think about how much time and effort she put in it. Sister Evangelist Johnson started a ministry where she lived, and she reached out to individuals, the poor. To, uh, the individuals who did not know Jesus Christ, and she opened up a ministry where she was and started teaching people about the gospel. Now, I want you to understand something. That's that, that, that's that. See, this is why this thing is whooping me real good. Because, see, it helped me understand that all those other activities I went to, there was nothing wrong with it. There's nothing in the world wrong with it. And I'm not beating them down. No, I'm not. But what I'm expressing here is that she she also included teaching and reaching out to those who did not know Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to understand something. As we as we do these daily things and, and, and we, uh, we we become part of these these programs, like I mentioned, there's nothing wrong with it. But on the day that Jesus Christ returns, he's not going to ask you anything about your program. He going to ask you in judgment day that you spread the gospel, that you talk about me. <laughs> so, so these things we're doing, they're okay. They're good, but they're only temporary. What's going to remain and, and going to always go in is that we speak and talk about Jesus Christ. Whew. I told you this lesson whooped me up. like it. Now, as I mentioned to earlier, this lesson that I'm, uh, that I'm speaking of, I'm looking at that man in the mirror. I'm, I'm, I'm talking, as I was reading, I was going, ouch, oh, because it was talking about me. So, so I want you as God's people to look at your calendar. See what you put more of your emphasis on and, and what you should put your emphasis on. You see what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this lesson opened up my eyes on what I need to be doing better in 2021, 22. So I want to put my focus on now, because uh, 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 once again, I want to say it again. There's, I'm not speaking down on those programs because I'll probably make some next year. But I want to put my emphasis on what's truly important that is spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ooh, my, my. See, I done hooked up on myself a good, pretty good right there on that verse. I'm going to move on to the next part. Can I, can I do that? <laughs> Sister Evangelist Johnson said, God is interested in souls. He, he, and, that's the, and, that's the, and that is the, exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Speaking about the souls and, and reaching out to them. All right, let's move on down to our lesson here. I done hooked up on myself pretty good right there on verse two. I'm going to go on to verse three. Can, can we go on to verse three? Let's go on to verse three. 
And verse 3 reads, And he gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Once again, we're falling back upon the condition that God's people were in, the Israelites were in, when they were in bondage. Now, as what I mentioned there, that God is a redeemer. God redeemed Israel and brought them back to the promised land, the holy city, Jerusalem, from the foreign lands uh, that they had been scattered in captivity. See, that's why we can rejoice that, that God in his very, he will ultimately bring all God's people and all the nations all over together. And see, that's why we have so much to be grateful and thankful for. For God has promised us as his people that he's going to also continue to bless us. And one day, all nations, all people, all races will come together to give him praise. When we look at verse 4, you see, this is the testimony of Israel's redemption. You remember this, the text says, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. That means they had problems as they was traveling. They were in deep distress. See, not only they were lost, just like we were. But see, when Jesus Christ died for us, before he died for us, like I mentioned earlier, we were some homeless, lost souls. We were hungry spiritually. We were thirsty as they were, that they were wandering in the wilderness. See, I mean, let me explain to you what it means to be wandering. When you were wandering in the wilderness, you didn't have no compass to give you direction in where you was going. They didn't have a GPS to, to show exactly where they were going. In other words, when they was wandering in the wilderness, they did not know what direction it was going. It was like walking in a dark room with a blindfold on, you don't know what direction they were going. And on top of that, they almost all died. So they were in distress. And that's why in verse 6 says, Then they cried out unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of the distress. The redemption of Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? Even though they brought this upon themselves, God still heard their cry. See, their dilemma had put them to the point where they said, in verse 6 says, they had to cry out to the Lord. See, when you look at verse 6, it's repeated three times in the Psalms. In verse 13, in verse 19, in verse 28, they did the same thing. They cried out. See, see, the need for prayer is the same for us today. Regardless of the situation we're in, God is still faithful and trustworthy. So he invites you. You remember this text you always, we always read? He says, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help him in the time of our need. See, that's Hebrews 4, 16. That's the privilege we got as God's people. Even if we even cause this distress, that's brought upon us by disobedience, God still remains faithful, even when we are not. That's why we got to let the redeemed say so. We got to talk about it. We got to open up our mouth. See, this sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, disobedience is the cause of our own distress. Then that's why, as God's people, repentance is required. Let's look at verse 7. Verse 7 reads, follow along with me here. Let's go to verse 7. He says, and he led them forth by the right way, that they may go to a city for a dwelling place. Oh, that men, what the, there we are again, would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. 
Oh my goodness. There it is again. Oh, that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. For he is good. Oh my, my. There, that, there, there he is directing our attention again to give thanks to God for what he did. That means I thank you, Lord, for delivering me. See, the Bible says, and he led them forth by the right way. That's what verse 7 said. See, that word right is the Hebrew word yasha, which means he led them straight. <laughs> you see, when he was in the when they was in the wilderness, once again they was wandering. Wandering me, I don't know which way to go. Then the Bible says. He led them the right way. That means he led them straight. So deliverance means I didn't know where I was going, God. I didn't know what I was doing. But you grabbed me by my hand. <laughs> and you led me straight. He led them in a straight path. He directed them. Instead of them going aimless as they it was going, as they was wandering in the wilderness, he made their, strap, their, their, their path straight. <laughs> Not only did he guide them to safety, but he took them to a dwelling place where they could thrive. He put them on a straight and narrow path. And now after he not only put them on a straight and narrow path, he gave them a home to live in. So imagine the relief he gave them like a person who's been living in the streets all their life in temporary shelter. Then someone says, come here, I got a house to give you. <laughs> you see, they couldn't help but express their joy and their praise to God. Because look what God has done. See, if God has delivered you from something, and God, no matter what it is, if he's delivered you uh, uh, from uh, uh sickness, from, from, from bad health, from uh, alcoholism, from uh, drugs, whatever God has delivered you from, you need to let somebody know about it. You see, if you look at verse 6, it's this same verse is found four times in his song. He's telling everybody, praise him. Praise God. Let others know about it. See, 107.9 said, the Lord is to be praised for he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. That's verse 9. See, the Hebrew word here deeply means uh, poetic, which is satisfieth. It, it, you know, normally when we read this text, it's talking about food, but it's also compared with a longing uh, for a hungry soul. So in other words, God is satisfied. He's taking care of our every needs. So if you notice what he said, he said for us to remember what God has done. So it, it so as as we as I mentioned earlier, sometimes this is compared with food and drink. But it also lets you know that God, he, He's aware of the need. He was aware, aware of the needs of the Israelites. He's also aware of the needs of ours. So I got to talk about it. We got to let somebody know. The hungry souls would be filled. And it would overflow. In other words, it's, when you say satisfies, that means it's going to be complete. That means God is going to work it out. Let's go back to our comments and make sure I ain't forgot anybody's comments. So Sister Martha uh, Terry said, have mercy. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What a mighty God we serve. Woo. Sister, Sister Nadine said, there is no rest in wandering. That's, that's a good point. You see, when you're wandering, you know, like as I mentioned earlier, you, you, you do not have a compass. You, they didn't have GPS. They couldn't ask Alexis. Can you give me directions? They were walking. You, they might as well have been walking with a blindfold. But the Bible says he made their path straight. 
Sister Nadine said, there is no rest in wondering. He will supply all I need. Then Sister Ingram said, God said, if, we, if he be lifted up, he will draw all men. Yes, ma'am. If we don't tell people what God did for us, and he came to do the same for us. Exactly. We got to open up our mouths and tell somebody what God has done. Mary Jesus, mother said, he filled the hungry with good things. That's what Sister Nadine said. So we, I'm, I'm going to make sure I, I, I cover everybody's comments in here. Yes, he is a deliverer. Let's go on down to our lesson. Let's, let's, let's keep on moving here because we still got a few more verses. All right, Psalms. That's, all right. I don't want to. The next verse we go to is just a second here. I think the next text we'll cover, it jumps down to 39, 40, 41, and 42. Let's take a look at that. 39, 40, 41, and 42. And it reads, When they are diminished and brought low, through oppression, affliction, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Oh, y'all. Now we're talking about, once again, let's look at when they are diminished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no no way. Now, the verse, even though it, it, it jumped down just a little bit longer, we're going to look at the closing verses of this song of Thanksgiving. When you look at verse 39, he makes it emphatically clear that he declares that all the ones who are rebellious and fight against God and his people are brought low. See, God is once again, he's not only telling you I'm going to redeem you, but I'm going to take care of those who rebel against me and against his people. He said, I'm going to bring them low. I'm going to impoverish them through impression, affliction, and sorrow. Not only that, they also go to decrease in number. He said, even those the so-called princes and those who are wealthy and the upper class, God is going to judge them. He said, the Lord was going to hit. Now I'm going to make them wonder in the wilderness. You see, here we see God is going to make a direct reversal of the righteousness with the unrighteous. See, God is faithful. God's faithful people. He brought them from wandering in the wilderness. The unjust that was brought forced upon them. Now God is going to turn it upon those who are enemies of his. For 41 says, yet set it, he, he the poor on high from affliction, he maketh him families like a flock. Now, when you look at verse 41, here the Psalms is making a dramatic comparison, showing how the Lord deals with the redeemed. He said, I'm going to set the poor on high from affliction. So he's not only going to redeem you, God, he said, now I'm going to uh, set you upon high. In other words, the Lord, he's going to rescue the poor from the affliction. He's setting them in high position of authority and protection so that no further trouble can, can reach them. That's what I like about the text. He said, I'm going to set you upon high. The oppressed and the poor, that's once again, we're looking at the text. The text Say, see, you see how God shows his attention to those who are poor, to those who are afflicted. That's why we have this command to reach out to them. Because God says, I'm going to set the poor and the, and the, the, the uh, poor in affliction upon high. So when he's setting them on high, he's keeping them up away from trouble. What a God, what a God. What a God, what a God. In other words, the Lord is going to rescue the poor. He's going to protect the poor. 
he's going to make sure that they not fall in any more calamity. And then look at in the latter part of verse 44, 41, he says, he maketh him families like flock. In other words, he maketh the he's going to make the families of the poor increase like flocks of sheep. <laughs> my God, my God. And we have the audacity to want to say, I'm going to keep my mouth shut because he's all he's still working. All of these things we mentioned are not only present, but they're prophetic for the future. God says, I'm going to work in your behalf. I'm going to be still working in the background. So while we increasing, the Bible says, those wicked ones is going to decrease. Oh, my, my, my. 42. Can we take a look at verse 42? 42 says, the righteous see it and rejoice. And all iniquity stops his mouth. Once again, the righteous see it and rejoice. Let me, let me let you read it with me. The righteous see it and rejoice. And all iniquity stops its mouth. Can we stop right there? Once again, as I mentioned earlier, the Bible says that the righteous one stopping and they see what's happening and they're rejoicing. So God, here we go again. Now you're telling me again, I need to talk about it. Why? Sure. If you're grateful for what he's done, you can't help but talk about it. The psalmist is driving home again the fact that because God is faithful and he's gracious to his people, we have no other obligation but to see what he's done. And when we see about it, we got to talk about it. We got to rejoice and let others know about it. But when you look at verse uh, one, uh, one of, uh, verse 2 of this same uh, book, he says, they will shout out loud as they were in encouraged to. The righteous shall see it, and they're going to open up their mouth and speak about it. See, the very beginning of this psalm is speaking about, again, shouting out loud, speaking about God. And then the look, at, look at the latter part. It says, and on the other hand, the wicked shall stop her mouth and they're going to be silent. God, so in other words, he's going to close the mouth of the enemies, but the righteous are going to be ex ex explained and excused, sued with joyousness and praise to God. So in the shame, in the humiliation of the wicked, in other words, they ain't got nothing else to say. <laughs> the very ones are the enemies who were fighting against God. Now they're speechless. The only one that's speaking here, the Bible says, are the righteous. And they're rejoicing for what God has done. In their own defense, they're now praising God. Let's look at verse 43. 43 reads, Whosoever is wise will observe these things. <laughs> oh, man. Now, the opposite of wise can, can we talk about what the opposite of wise is? Let's finish, let's finish the text first. And they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. The Bible says, whoever is wise will observe these things. Hmm. The opposite of a wise person is foolish. You can't help but talk about the goodness of God and see what he's doing and not speak about it. This, this psalm is inviting each one of us to look at the way God works in the world, both in responding to those who cry out to him and his ability to bring low and raise high those who serve him. Wisdom tells us, hey, you got to take notice. We have to recognize this 4-4 picture. 
of plight and salvation. What we were once in, now God has brought us out of. And it is the steadfastness of God that he is now, that we see that we have to praise with insight. You see, as we read this text, this is a great song of the mercy of God. It is a message he's letting us know that we should cry out to God in our distress. We need to find deliverance through his goodness. We shall give him thanks and praise him. See, when you look at the conclusion of this psalm, the hymn is a thanksgiving and a praise to a wisdom psalm. The righteous will become wise, the Bible says, by studying, seeing what God has done and what he's done in, man, in, in mankind's behalf. The latter part says, and they would understand the love and kindness of the Lord. See, we understand his love and kindness, his loyal love, his covenant love of God by the statements and the promise of his word. But we understand how his acts among men in the past and in the present, we see the wisdom behind God. We will understand his love and kindness. What does the Bible say? When we look at the text and he says, and they will understand the love and kindness of the Lord, we can't help but fall back on the text that says, all things <laughs> work together for the good of them that what? Love God. And once you understand, build a relationship with God, you can't help but love him. And the more they love him, the more clearly they will see him. Mm. And more happily they will feel. See, how can man not understand and see what God has done? He who has for his faith in God can't help but experience this. Let's go back to our comments. Our comment says, Sister Evangelist Johnson said, allow God to order us, order us and be in peace. Yes, ma'am. The more we love God, Sister, uh, uh, Sister Nadine says, the more we love God, the more clearly we will see him. That's so true. That's so true. That's why when we read this text and, and, and when we take a look at this, uh, uh, this, this scripture here, you know, where we say uh, all things work for those uh, who love God. All things work good for those who love God. You, you know, in order to love God, you know, you need to know God. In order to know God, you need to learn about God. And see, and once you learn about God, the process is you got to tell somebody. So, so when you need read this text, when when you once you hear this text again, and, you, and when the Bible says, "Let the redeemer of the Lord say so," we all need to analyze our life. Am I letting people know what redeem really means? You remember, buy back property that was sold or a person who was enslaved. The Lord bought us back from bondage and slavery. The God has delivered us. God has made a, a, a way for us. He says that when you come to him, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your savior and you are saved. Now, proud of this, this, this redemption, this simple statement I just made, but proud of that, you had to do a hundred things in order to be uh, come to a relationship with Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ made it very simple. <laughs> he made it very simple in order to be saved. We are redeemed people. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
and and can I read one more time? I, I love reading what the new uh, the new living translation says in closing. New Living Translation 107 verse 2 says, has the Lord redeemed you? <laughs> then speak out. <laughs> Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Open, up, open your mouth and give God praise. Let others know what God has done for you. It's now 1025 and and if anyone else has any more comments they want to share, uh, please do. Uh, Sister uh, Evangelist John said, yes, if you redeem, you got to tell somebody about it. And that means, as I mentioned earlier, he has bought you back and he's, he's delivered you from something. And we all have been delivered just by Jesus Christ dying for us. And he may have delivered you something, something else in your life. There's nothing wrong with sharing your testimony. See, sometimes uh, we, we feel that if I share my testimony, then people are going to look down on me. No, 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 no. If you share your testimony, Jesus Christ is going to look up on you. <laughs> the Bible says we've already taught it. We've already learned that when you speak about him and you speak about how he's redeemed you, the Bible says he will lift you up on high. That means he's going to put you in a position that the, whatever they saying doesn't even matter because he said, I'm going to shut their mouths. Let others know about your, what you done been through. Let others know. And see what, what it does is it lets people know that even though you looking at me and I'm talking about Jesus Christ, I am redeemed just as well as you are. I have a testimony just as you are. I, I have I not always been Brother Terry who wants to talk about Jesus Christ. In my testimony, and I, what I'm proud of is that I can sit down and talk to that someone who's, who's drinking a 40 because I know what a 40 tastes like. I can sit down and talk to somebody who's been clubbing all night long because I understand what it means to be clubbing all night long. But I got something better for you. Because after you get through clubbing, I understand what it feels like to wake up with that hangover. Or wake up with uh, uh, not, not knowing, you know, how did I get here? Or why am I here in this, in this situation? But I got something better for you. You know, he, he redeemed me. Because see, what I felt then was on a temporary. What Jesus Christ has given to me now is eternal. <laughs> so it's nothing wrong with being redeemed because the redeemed tells me that I got a past. Whew. Whew. Ooh, my, my, my. You see, it's nothing wrong with your past. It's nothing wrong with your past because your past tells you that Jesus Christ was working in, in your behalf. Your past tells other individuals, even though I didn't love myself, Jesus Christ was watching out for me, even when I didn't even have any thoughts about him. Redeemed. That's why, as God's people, when we see individuals in this type of situation, you know, what information we get at the church, now we got a responsibility to go tell somebody about it. We got a responsibility to, to let them know you can be redeemed just as well as I was because I was in the same place that you were. Redeemed. If you've been redeemed, let everyone know all about it. Pastor says in closing, we all have a past, but thank God for your present and give him glory for your future becomes everlasting with God. Yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God for your past because what your past can do now, you you got something to preach about. You got some. See, when they tell you what you've been through, all you can do is just smile about it because I know what you've been through, but now I got something I got to tell you that can, that's going to be for your future. 
Sister Evangel Johnson said, I was once lost, but now I'm found. <laughs> my, my, my. That's a good song. Yes, ma'am. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Amen and amen again. It's now 1029. Thank you guys for coming in. Thank you for, for, for tuning in with us. I appreciate so much your, your attendance. I thank you for the new people that's showing up. And, and as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, I will be returning live to Wortham Chapel. We'll be do doing this uh, live, and I'd like for individuals to, to, uh, to continue uh, virtually, but also uh, you have an opportunity to please uh, uh, come uh, worship with us at Wortham Chapel Baptist Church, uh, 37 West Church Street in Alamo, Tennessee, uh, uh, and, and, and come and worship with us. Uh, Pastor Ron Thaw will be taking over here at 11 o'clock and having afternoon service, but I will be returning November the 1st, not, I'm sorry, uh, first Sunday in November uh, uh, to uh, do our services live there at Wortham Chapel Baptist Church, and I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm just looking forward to seeing you guys face to face. Uh, virtual has its place, but it's nothing like, man, seeing my brothers and sisters and answering these questions and talking with you guys face to face. And so you can see this big head, uh, big forehead guy <laughs> face to face. <laughs> I look forward to it. Love you guys. May God continue to bless you and, 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 and continue to heal whatever you're going through and deliver you in whatever you're going through. Praise God. We love him. We, I, I love you all. Uh, continue to seek in God and let God always direct your paths. Have a good morning. And may God continue to bless you. Have a good, good day.